Good morning. Welcome to our service today. I'm Pastor Mike with Abundant Love Ministries, and this is our online service. Uh, we uh, are glad to have you with us, and I want to begin today with prayer. We've got so much to say, and it's just going to take the wisdom of God to get said what we uh, have to say. <laughs> and and uh, I, I just really believe that everything he's given us is so important. Amen. Amen. Because you're that precious to him. Well, Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this time together. And I thank you for the very words to speak that will convey your heart, yes. convey your wisdom, and help us to learn your ways and live a life that's pleasing unto you. Thank you for touching each and every one that's with us, whether it's live or whether it's by recording. Uh, Father, I, I, there's so many needs out there that we can't list them all, but you knew if each and every one of them, and you provided for each need. So today, manifest your goodness, your grace, your glory yes. by touching each life with the affirmation of your love and by manifesting your provision as yes, we reach Lord. out by faith to receive. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. 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 We've been teaching a series of messages on healing, and we were talking about faith, grace, and healing. And uh, I, I titled this Do Not Err, and, and uh, someone spoke to me last week uh, and, and mentioned that a lot of people may not really understand that word err. And, you know, we want to be simple. Really, when the Word of God uses the word err, it's saying, make no mistake about this. Right. Amen. And so let me read this to you if I can. It's James chapter 1, verse 13. It says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Now, what did he mean, do not err? He meant, make no mistake about God is not your adversary. In fact, God tells us who our adversary is over in 1 Peter chapter 5. Yes. He says, your adversary, the devil, stalks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, that's talking about, he, he's looking for believers that are weak and vulnerable. Glory to God. You don't have to be weak and vulnerable. All you need is God's word, mm -hmm. and you need to hide it in your heart by meditating upon it. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're teaching what we teach. So let's make no mistake about it. And, and uh, today on Facebook, I, I basically announced this service and made the comment, would men blame God? And uh, is it a serious thing to blame God for those things for which he is not responsible? I believe it is a serious thing. And yet I also believe God is so patient, so kind, so merciful. And so we're going to talk about this a little bit. In, in fact, uh, historically, men have erred about this point greatly. Men have made great mistakes in attributing to God things that were not of God. You know, if you'll remember, even in Jesus' day when he ministered among men, uh, the, the religious folks of his day uh, said that he was ministering by the, the power of the devil himself. Right. And Jesus said, you know, he took that quite seriously. He said, all manner of sin will be forgiven the Son of Man, but not blaspheme in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. In other words, not attributing the works of God to the devil or the works of the devil to God. Amen. Well, listen to this, if you would, over here. Have men ever blamed God? In Job 38, Job 38, verse 1, it says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel? by words without knowledge. Again, that's a little bit vague to us. We don't talk that way today. <clears throat> but I want you to notice something. <clears throat> when he's saying, who darkens counsel by words without knowledge, he's saying, Job, why are you talking about things you have no idea about? And, and uh, how many of you have ever read the book of Job? How many of you have ever been confused by the book of Job? Mm -hmm. Especially, I don't know about you, but I know when I came into the Word of Faith message, began to learn the Word of Faith message and, and recalled some of the things that people had taught over the years about Job and about his sufferings, I, I found it real difficult to reconcile the two. Right. And yet God's telling us over here that everything Job said was suspect or questionable. Mm -hmm. So why do people make a, 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 a basically a doctrine out of Job's failures, out of his, his confusion? It, it, I don't know why they do that. Amen. Let me read this to you out of the message, and I want to make a couple of comments about this same text. Uh, I'm actually going to read Job 38, 1 through 3 out of the message Bible. It says, <clears throat> And now finally God answered Job from the eye of a violent storm. 
I don't know why I never really stopped to think about that. You know, uh, when he was dealing with Elijah, remember Elijah and his discouragement and depression following uh, his victory at Mount Carmel? Yeah. He, you know, here he was, the the witch had threatened him. <laughs> Amen. Right. And uh, Jezebel threatened him, and, and he'd run, and he'd hid under the juniper tree, and then, you know, God's trying to recover him. And, and in the middle of all that, the Lord... Uh, basically calls him out and, and well let's let's look at it here we've got it on I've got it on my Bible online and uh, let's just look at this it says in verse 9 of first Kings chapter 19 it says he came thither unto a cave this is talking about Elijah of course and lodged there and behold the word of the Lord came unto him and said unto him what dost thou hear Elijah and he said I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts and for the children of Israel have forsaken I'm sorry for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am loved, and they seek my life to take it away. Have you ever felt all alone? <laughs> Sometimes you can be in the middle of a family reunion, and you feel like you're all alone, because maybe you're the only one that believes God and takes him at his word. Amen? Mm -hmm. But that can change if you'll remain steadfast and uncompromised before the Lord. You'll gain influence in people's lives. Uh, in, in verse 11 it says um, and he said the Lord spoke to Job and says uh, not to Job I apologize I've got Job on the mind he said to Elijah go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord and behold the Lord passed by in a great and a strong wind and rent the mountains talk about a tempest talk about a violent storm yeah. and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord but the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind an earthquake and the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. Notice all these different mm -hmm. dramatic means by which God was manifesting here. But that isn't how he chose to, spoke, how he chose to, spoke, chose to speak to his servant. Yeah. It says, after the fire, a still small voice. Mm -hmm. So why did he choose to speak out of the tempest to Job? Why do you suppose that is? I, I don't know why. I, I just have read that so many times over the years, and I never really stopped to question. I believe he was very upset at what Job had been saying because Job was attributing to God the misery in his life, God being the source of that misery, and God wasn't the source of his misery. Job opened doors through fear and unbelief, mm -hmm. and, and uh, plain and simple, and he... He suffered the result of his own uh, negative faith, you could say, and, and God was standing by. And, and listen, it's kind of interesting here. Here we are in chapter 38. God's finally calling Job to give account. And, and uh, for the first 38 chapters, Job talked about anything that seemed to come to his mind. And, and he was content to err and blame God all that time. Mm -hmm. And that's I believe that's what angered God because he knew that that for time to come, all of time to come, men that read the book of Job uh, would stand to be tempted to be very confused by what was being said there. See, a lot of people just read the misery and they identify with the misery of Job and they even blow it out of proportion. Some people think that, that the entirety of Job's life was misery but it really wasn't. They say these miserable days, uh, uh, let's say from chapter 1 when, when all the misery began into chapter 38, 39, uh, that all took place or transpired within a nine-month period. It wasn't right. his entire life. Right, right. Now, we all are going to face temptations, face challenges. Sure. But what we need to do is instead of sitting back and, and waxing philosophical, we need to go to God. Yeah. Job talked about God, but what he said about God wasn't even true. It wasn't even accurate up to this point. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. No, he didn't. Mm -mm. No, he didn't. It was the devil that was the thief that came and stole and tried to kill and destroy. Mm -hmm. It wasn't God. God wasn't the problem. God had the solution. But as long as Job was content to sit back and talk about God rather than to God, there was very little the Lord could do. And, and all the time that Job continued to speak on, people were becoming more and more confused. 
Oh, I tell you, it's so sad. Yeah. Uh, listen to this from Job 40 and, and verse 6. Job 40 and verse 6. It says, Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind, and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. Wilt thou also disannul my judgment, that thou may condemn me, or will thou condemn me, that thou mayest be righteous? Mm. Now, did you catch what was being said there? I, again, in the Elizabethan English that the King James has translated into, sometimes these things, I don't know about you, but I sometimes read something, and I wonder if I'm if I'm really hearing what I'm, yeah. you know, what I'm reading, true. if that's really what it's saying. Uh, and, and as I read that, what it's telling me is the Lord is saying, will you ignore my judgments or, or my declarations? Will thou condemn me so you'll look righteous? Mm. You know, there's a lot of churches today that have denied the power of God's word. They've denied the, the person of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. Oh, they'll, they'll sing about him. I went to church and sang about him, but they never had any kind of a relationship with the Holy Ghost, the comforter that mm -hmm. Jesus said was to come when he departed. Uh, and, and all they would do is sing about him, kind of like Job, talking about God, but not really interacting with him. There's a problem there, folks. Yeah. And, and uh, God would not have sent his Holy Spirit in these last days, these final hours, were it not that we needed him desperately. Yeah. We need the Holy Spirit. In fact, I'm getting ready to start a new series here in a few weeks, and we're going to talk about the new birth. What is it? What happened when you got born again? And we're going to talk about the next step, getting filled with the Holy Spirit, because you need the Holy Spirit to live a successful and a victorious life. But here the Lord is asking him, he's saying, are you going to ignore the truth so you can blame me and look good? And there's a lot of preachers that are doing that. They don't know how to pray for the sick. People are dying in their churches. People are sick and afflicted in their churches. And, and, and they're unable, they're powerless to help them. And they pray these anemic prayers polluted with unbelief. Lord, thy will be done. No, they need to understand what his will is. John told us over in 1 John 5, he said, if, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. We don't determine his will by praying and asking. We feed upon his word. Yeah. We look at the testimony of Jesus. Yes. Jesus was anointed of God. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, yeah. as many as would believe at least. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so here we go. Uh, listen to this. This is out of the Message Bible. I'll go ahead. I need to hurry on here. Job 40 and verse 8 says, Do you presume to tell me what I'm doing wrong? Are you calling me a sinner so you can be a saint? Whoa. See, there's a lot of people that would rather say God has changed. God who said very clearly numerous times, but clearly in Malachi, I am the Lord, I change not. They're saying God has changed. He, he doesn't heal anymore. He's not Jesus Christ really the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because mm. he used to heal, but he doesn't now. Mm. Folks, if he's ever healed, he heals now. That's right. Glory to God. Amen. God. And so, can you see why maybe James, by the Holy Ghost, made that that exhortation? Don't err. Make no mistake about it. God's not your problem. God's not your enemy. Mm -hmm. If he is, where do you go for help? For there is none. Right, right. There is none. Glory to God. And people just, it, it amazes me. Back in Job thirteen fifteen, I've heard this quoted so many times, and uh, let me read it to you. Job thirteen fifteen says, "Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him." Well, how noble does that make Job look? Mm. See, that's one of those things he said that made him look real good. How many people have just sat there? Oh, the faith of Job. The faith of Job. Well, faith is based upon the Word of God, and it wasn't God that was slaying Job. Right. I just cannot emphasize that enough. Amen. Amen. And, and uh, when you think about it, what does that do? That makes Job look better than God. Because even though he doesn't understand, he's attributing to God that God is the source of his suffering, mm -hmm. and yet he's going to take it. Mm -hmm. He's going to take it like a man. Well, he needed to get on his face before God instead of gathering with his friends and talking about God. There's a lot of people today. Listen, we need good fellowship, but we need to fellowship with the right people. Amen. Amen. We need to fellowship with the kind of people that will bring us back to God and his word, not the kind of people that will stand as a substitute for the Father 
in his word in our lives, but those that will teach us, those that will stand with us and agree with us as we agree upon God's word. Amen. In Hebrews 3, it tells us in verse 7, today, it says, wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Mm. Harden not your hearts. So we need to not just hear God's word, but we need to begin to act upon his word. And it says, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Now when he's talking about as in the provocation, he's talking about when Israel wandered in the desert. You know, what was just a, a, a few hours or days journey became a life for those people. And it was because of their attitude. It wasn't that God wasn't capable of taking them into the promised land. He could have, except for the fact that they wouldn't go. Mm. And they didn't trust him. And their unbelief prevented God from doing what he longed to do. He wanted to bless them. And I'm convinced he wants to bless his people today. Yes. But he's limited by their unbelief. In fact, uh, Israel was called to account. And it was asked of Israel, Who art thou that limiteth the Holy One of God? Holy One of Israel. I'm sorry, Holy One of Israel. Uh, so over here the Holy Spirit is saying harden not your hearts in verse 9 he says when your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my works for 40 years wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said they do always err in their heart what did he say they're making mistakes constantly mm -hmm. and what were they making mistakes about he says they do always make mistakes in their heart they have not known my ways my ways see Job didn't know God's ways he didn't know God nearly as well as he presumed to know him right and you'll know him no better than what you know of his word he's revealed himself to us through his son and through his written word so if you want to know the will of God I want to ask you, how many times have you read the Gospels? How many times have you ever read of Jesus passing by someone who was sick without at least affording them an opportunity to receive healing? Now, in some cases, he waited until they cried out, but that was faith on their part crying out. Right. But he never turned away anybody that would respond. However, there were accounts, and we've already talked about that, where he was present to heal certain ones but their religion prevented them from humbling themselves to the point that they might receive. And so they frustrated the grace of God. You ever heard of that? Yes. We can frustrate the grace of God. Uh, just like Job, he was provoking God. I believe his, his actions were to a point that there was a, a line he was about to cross. I believe that's why God spoke to him out of that violent storm as the message Bible put it, was he was about to cross a line he did not want to cross. Mm -hmm. And, and God was, was fed up with it. Because see, the things we say, the life we live, it impacts others. What is it telling others about the God we claim to know yes. and, and desire to serve, I believe? That's true. Amen. And I'm, I'm not wanting to make anybody feel bad. We've all made mistakes. Sure. We've all learned from different sources things that perhaps later we learned weren't, weren't accurate. Right. Maybe not even true. Uh, and, and But the thing is, is what do we do when the truth is presented to us? See, I know there over the years, as, as a Word of Faith preacher, uh, I've noticed that there's been a tendency for people to sometimes just be lazy, if I can go there. And, and they would rather go to a church that will help them blame God and justify their blame of God, mm -hmm. rather than a church that will teach them how to act responsibly in order to receive from God. They, they want to go to a church where it's all about what God is doing for you. And yet, for all that God is doing, so many of those people never receive anything. And it's not that God isn't doing something or isn't wanting to do something. It's that he's limited by people who are ignorant of his ways, mm -hmm. refuse to learn his ways, and turn a deaf ear when the word is preached. We cannot afford to do that. We're in the last mm -hmm. days. And listen, folks, I tell you, I was just praying this morning. I was thinking this morning, and I've been praying about this for some time. But even this this uh, COVID situation, I, I believe the death toll would have been much higher had it not been for the church praying. Yeah, I know our church for the last couple of years has has spent time in intercession and praying yes. for God's will in this earth. And, and taking authority over the devices of the adversary. Listen, the reason the church is going to be raptured, not for well believe, the rapture is imminent. Uh, when the reason, it, and I'm not going to give you a day and an hour, don't worry about that. We'll know when it happens, right? Yeah. But I believe it's imminent because of the things that are transpiring now. And, and one thing that's going to 
uh, one reason I believe the rapture is going to take place is for all that's to be accomplished in the tribulation to be accomplished the church has to be out of the way because we're an impediment to the devil's efforts and his will in these last days. Yeah. See, I, I believe the devil well intended to kill a whole lot more people with that virus than what he's been able to kill. Yeah. And he's still at work. I, I, I believe we're praying for folks. Yes. You need the wisdom of God. I'm not saying that so you'll rush mm -hmm. out and get the vaccine. You, you need to turn to God. That's what's important mm -hmm. is to, to give yourself to and him in prayer wisdom. and faith and have his wisdom to do what you know in your heart God would have you to do. Glory to God. Amen. Mm -hmm. So anyway, notice this. It says they do always hear. This is verse 10, the latter part of it. He says, wherefore was I grieved? I'll, I'll just read the whole verse. Wherefore was I grieved with that generation said they do always hear in their heart and they have not known my ways? So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Now when he's talking about not entering into the rest, he's saying essentially that those who fail to learn God's ways will never enjoy this side of heaven, the full benefit of all Jesus has accomplished for them. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter that by his stripes you were healed, that's irrelevant. You've got to learn his ways, saints. Just open your Bible. Read your Bible. Let God speak to you yes. for himself. Yes. Uh, you know, follow after preachers and teachers that minister God's word. It, you know what? It might call for you to have to do a little repenting here and there. Who hasn't? Right, right. We're not perfect. That's why God sent his son to be a perfect savior. Mm -hmm. and, and thank God for that. If we're wrong, we just need to fess up and own it and move on and ask God to forgive us as we walk forward, right? Yes, yes. This forgiveness is there. All we've got to do is really receive it. So those who fail to learn his ways basically forfeit the benefits that the blood was shed to buy them, at least this side of Egypt. Are they not going to heaven? No, they're going to heaven, I believe, if they've been born again. But they're going to live in the limitations of their flesh and and, and forfeit the, the goodness of God in this mm -hmm. present hour. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so, uh, listen, to this is uh, another verse. Verse 78, I, uh, actually Psalm 78, verse 40 and 42. It says, How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Mm. Isn't that sad? Lord, In other words, they refused to give God credit for the good, but were quick to blame him for anything evil or bad. Yeah. Time and time again. That's why it's so important that we learn God's ways uh, so we don't inadvertently blame God. We, I, I'm convinced there are preachers right now standing in their pulpits that their intention isn't to blame God, but that's what they're doing mm -hmm. by attributing evil to him. Yeah. By saying things like, well, I don't know why you're sick, but God must be teaching you something. No, he isn't. No. No, if God taught you anything, it would be how to receive your healing. Amen. Glory to God. Listen to Second Timothy. This was good instruction to a young minister, but it's just as good for a believer today. Second Timothy 2, verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. Now, you don't have to please anybody but Jesus with your right. studies. Amen. Right, right. And, and listen, he's probably a lot easier than most us people. <laughs> it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, I want to submit a thought here. If the word can be rightly divided, can it be wrongly divided? Yes. I believe so. See, when we feed on the book of Job at all, listen, there's a wealth of wisdom in there. You can learn a whole lot of what not to do, and then you can learn a whole lot of what to do in the last several chapters. Amen. It's yeah. very worthwhile. Mm -hmm. I used to, I'll tell you, I, I used to not like the book of Job because it challenged me so. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, Lord, if it challenges me, then I need to get in there and see what's really being said. And that's when the Lord was able to start teaching me. See, God's not giving you a spirit of fear. Certainly not about his own word. Right. Now, now, some of us can, can you know, it's a, it's a sobering thought to, to make ourselves accountable to God. But not really when you know how much he loves you. And he's helping us. He is helping. Mm -hmm. He's not out to critique us. Or, mm -mm. You know, like I said, he's a lot easier to please through our studies than, than most men are. Yeah. 
Yeah. See, as a pastor, there have been times I look at people, I'll be honest with you, I've, I've, I've matured some now, but I remember years ago, there. I, I remember I was talking to somebody the other day, I saw a shirt that kind of triggered this memory. I remember a, a point in my life where I told the Lord, Lord, ministry would be great if it wasn't for the people. He said, well, if it wasn't for the people, I wouldn't need you. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the trouble is, I was a people too. I had my own issues. <laughs> I was just focused on everybody else's. Well, God's a good God, and He's a loving Father, he and He wants to encourage us. He wants to bless us, but He needs our cooperation. Yes. That's why it's incumbent upon us. It, it's it's critical for us to open the Bible and let God speak to us, learn His ways. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Amen. Listen to this. First Thessalonians two thirteen. It says, for this cause also we think, <laughs> this was Paul thanking them and, and thanking the Lord and acknowledging his thankfulness for them, I should say. He said, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men. Mm -hmm. Amen. Can you say that about every message you've ever heard from every preacher? Mm -hmm. You know, the only way you can know or the only way you can tell is if you've got your Bible. Don't ever... Don't ever sit in a church service without your Bible. Mm -hmm. Or if you, for some reason, if there's some, you know, I know a lot of times we use our, our phones and electronic devices today, mm -hmm. iPads and things, and that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but even if you don't have that available, at least get you a pencil and a piece of paper and write out some notes so you can go back and prove yeah. whether those things that you were being taught yeah. were true or not, Amen. whether they were scriptural or not. Mm -hmm. And if you find you're sitting under a preacher that discourages you from reading your Bible or picking up your Bible, mm -hmm. you need to run, not yeah. walk, but you need to run and you need to pray and ask the Lord to help you find mm -hmm. a good word church. Amen. Not a church that teaches the popular message of the day, but a church that teaches Thus saith the Lord, and can establish it, and will have you turn in your own Bible to validate it. Amen. That's one thing I loved about Kenneth Hagin, Senior, uh, our father in the faith, was that that he would never teach you anything, but what he would give you God's word at least two, if not three, sometimes four or five witnesses. Mm -hmm. In other words, he'd give you not just one verse to 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 present a truth to you, right. but he'd give you at least two, three, sometimes more. And I'm about out of time here, but listen to this. This is uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 13 made this statement. It says, For this cause also we th or thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as, as it is in truth the word of God which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Notice the word doesn't work in you except you believe. Glory mm -hmm. to God. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and another verse that goes along with this and with the importance of your study of God's word, Acts chapter 17 and verse 10. It says, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word of God with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were true. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people uh, and a lot of believers, sincere believers, uh, try to find something to feed on through the week and they go out and buy devotionals. You, you know what? If you'll sit under a good minister of God's word that'll teach the word, teach the truth. If you'll take notes, that'll give you enough to feed on for several weeks. That's true. And, and it's something good to go back. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm about to go over. Lord, help me. Help me, help me, help me. Um, my goodness. There's so much to say. Listen, I've, I'm going to hush my mouth. I want Robin to have a few minutes here to talk tie with that you. Up. You need to tie that up. Well, I'm, I'm not sure where to go. There's so many different points. Mm -hmm. I, I was in the middle of thinking about there that it just kind of, mm. <laughs> oh, it's just so important. Listen, and, and I, I, I know I, I, this is where I was going with that thought. I know over the years there have been times that I've attended meetings, I've heard messages, and I was incredibly blessed by those messages. Yeah. And, and I would brag to other people about how good that message was. And I found early on, before I learned to take notes and really committed to do so, I found early on that as, as excited and thrilled as I was with the message, 
I'd heard and the word I'd received. Mm -hmm. When people would say, well, what did they say? There were times I couldn't honestly tell them. That's true. And, and I learned that, that, oh, I tell you, I learned when I went to Bible school, one of the best ways to remember what I was being taught in class was to go back and we would actually make cassette tapes at that at that time of our classes. I'd go back and listen to the tape and pull out my notes mm -hmm. and fill in my notes even better. Yeah. And I yeah. could remember. Yeah. And and there's things I teach you to this day mm -hmm. that as I'm sharing them with you, I'll I'll see myself back in that class as somebody preached it in the Bible school yes. and I heard it. Yes. Here's Robin, okay? Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Well, something it just keeps coming to me, and uh, the Lord woke me up early, like two hours early this morning. <laughs> I'm not an early morning person. I'm a late night person, night owl. But the Lord just woke me up early this morning, and I was praying, praying for different ones that we know have needs and things like that. And the Lord just started bringing back to me, you've been sitting here teaching it today, but from Mark 11, 23 and 24, and I've, I've got it opened up here, I want to read it. The reason that we read the word so much and make reference to the word is because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we're, we're endeavoring to, to spread good seed in our hearts through what we hear Amen. And, and, and because the faith will come the faith will come it's not up to us to make the faith come god's word has the life of god on the inside of it in inside of it and it will bring faith of its own Amen. volition of its own strength of its own power and so i just want to read this out of mark 11 23 and 24 there are some people praying I'm, we've been praying for uh different ones and also a couple of friends that are in the hospital today and are trying to watch this either they're watching it now or catching it whenever they can because of all the routines going on in the hospital and something just came to me about this so let me read it real quick mark 11 23 and 24 but i want to well let me read it let me read it uh, it's Jesus said, Verily I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he says. Therefore I Amen. say to you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. Now I want to stop a minute. The Lord brought something back to me earlier to, or, or, earlier this morning. Do you know further back in, in this chapter of Mark 11 is where Jesus cursed the fig tree. He cursed yeah. it from the roots. Well, what was interesting is apparently all of the disciples who were with him were looking at it and checking the leaves and, and not seeing any change. Because the next day they came back on that same path. They backtracked on the path they'd gone the day before and they called Jesus's attention to the fig tree and they said, look, behold the fig tree that you cursed, that it's withered up from the roots. This is what, what the Lord really laid on my heart. We can speak God's word to the mountain and whenever we speak God's word to the mountain, there are times that we're speaking to roots that, that went down for a year, two years, five years, ten years, you know, whatever. Amen. So we're speaking, and and God doesn't. God, I'm so glad He's not a band aid fix God. He is a good Father, and He deals with things. His Word brings healing from the roots out, from the roots out. He deals with root issues, Amen. so that we're healed and whole from the inside out. And so I just wanted to say another aspect came to me and it was the reason a lot of times we can it can feel daunting whosoever shall say to this mountain <clears throat> if we're not careful we'll exalt the mountain in our thinking <clears throat> but the reason that God said I believe one of many reasons God said in his word whosoever shall say to this mountain is because he knew to our natural eyes there are things that would look like mountains. Look insurmountable. Yeah, but I got. A, I have a serious question for us to think about. Do you think God looks up at mountains 
There is no way. He is seated in the heavenlies. And we've been seated in the heavenlies in, in Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus, right next to our heavenly Father. Amen. That means that all authority has been given to us, just like Jesus. And so even though things might appear to be like a mountain to us, we've got to remember, when we're speaking God's word, his word is not the least bit intimidated. His word does not see mountains. His word sees solutions. His word sees something moved <coughs> by the roots, uprooted and removed, and cast into the sea. Amen. So I want to encourage you, even if it feels daunting or tries to feel intimidating, oh my God, do you know what the doctors are saying? You know, it's okay what the doctors say, but I'm going to tell you now, don't sign for the package. Do you know what that means? It means uh, whenever, whenever there are t times that things are shipped to our front door and, and they require a signature, and so we have to sign for it. Just because there is a not great diagnosis that is going on in the natural at this point in time, and that's what doctors are, are taught to measure, uh, does not mean this is a permanent situation, does not mean that this is a permanent uh, uh, state if we will apply God's word to it. So I want to encourage you, speak God's word. Speak God's word. I'm so glad that to our heavenly father, there is no such thing as mountains because he's in the heavenlies looking down. When you're in the heavenlies, I've been on an airplane. You get up real high, you're looking down on the mountains then. You're not looking up at any mountains. So we've got to get the right perspective. Amen. Our father's I just perspective. keep hearing in my spirit as you're, as you're sharing even. Uh, before the doctor speaks, remember God has already spoken. Yes, yes. You know, we've had God. people over the years ask us to pray that they'd get a good report. We, the doctor needs to know what's present to deal with it. Yes. We don't We don't want to pray for God to mask anything the doctor can help you That's with. That's right. That's right. But listen to this from Isaiah 53, when it says, Who hath believed our report, mm. and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Yes, yes, that's good. Notice this. That, that implies there are going to be reports in our lives that are contrary. Right. But are we going to believe those reports over God's, or are we going to believe that this world has to fall into line? Jesus, you know, I get tickled every time I think about Jesus and the fig tree. Because if you'll read the account, it says Jesus answered that fig tree. Answered. In other words, Jesus refused to be subject to what this world was declaring to him. Yes. He knew that the world would be subject to him and the yes. authority that he possessed. Yes. Amen. Yes. So who hath believed our report? You've got to believe the report of God. That means when, when all the natural evidence may be contrary, you remember God has spoken. That's right. And, and you, you know, there are times you just have to tell yourself, I tell myself, I don't care how I feel, I don't care how I look, I don't care what the doctor says about me, I believe that by Jesus' stripes I was healed. That's right. And devil, I resist you. I command these symptoms yes. to be broken off my body yes. and to go from it because Jesus bare my sins. That's right. He carried my pains. That's right. You gotta talk back. Yes. You Answer gotta it. talk back. Amen. <laughs> yes. Jesus, as soon as the disciples awakened him in the middle of the sea and the storm was raging, mm -hmm. the first thing he did was he talked back. Yes. Amen. He yes. gave us an example. Yes. Why don't yes. you pray? Absolutely. Well, speak God's word. Don't be hesitant to speak God's word. Sometimes uh, we need to know what God's word says. Something we really like to feed on is you can go online, go on Google, and, and do a search for Kenneth E. Hagan, God's Medicine. Amen. And what comes Excellent. up, if you'll scroll down, don't look at the first about three or four or five things that come up. Go down and you're going to see a link with an arrow. If, if, you, if you turn it on, it's about, it's a little over an hour's worth of healing scriptures, God's Word. Um, that's where I love, he, he spoke the word uh, from God's word that says, Why shouldest thou die before thy time? So, so God knew we might get opportunities. But I want to encourage you, speak God's word. I need to say something. I had shared with a friend that two nights ago, Friday night, I had, I, every time I woke up, I was dreaming about her and her husband. And just over and over and over, and, and <clears throat> I saw where they said, you got to tell me what, what this dream was about. It was numerous dreams every time I woke up. This happened recently, about a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago. Every time I woke up, I was dreaming about someone in our church. And the Lord specifically, I kept praying for him. Every time I woke up, I would just begin to pray in the Spirit for him. 
whenever the Lord did this, it's because he wanted an opportunity to turn something in the direction he wanted it to go in. So, so I'm just sharing with you, I want to encourage you, you stand, you believe God, we're in agreement with you, and that means that God was already on top of what the devil's been trying to do. Well, I'm so glad you said that he answered that fig tree. Amen. We can answer it. When a fear comes, we answer it. I know another, we know someone else who was healed of prostate cancer, and he said, especially when he went to bed at night, fearful thoughts would try to bombard his mind. So he started turning on praise music, gentle, soft praise Amen. music, so that something, so it would redirect his focus and attention whenever he would wake up in the middle of the night. I, I've heard other people do the same thing with healing scriptures. So anyway, <clears throat> or God's medicine that I refer to, let's pray. We're going to pray Amen. for healing. Now, we've already set ourselves in agreement with some of y'all, and we're continuing to thank God that He is at work in your body. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is quickening, strengthening, making whole your and Healing our and mortal bodies. Yeah. Mortal bodies. That means the natural body. So we just set ourselves in agreement. Father, right now, we lift Amen. up those that have a need, that in are standing Jesus, physically, standing mentally, standing for peace, standing, Father, with regards to outer challenges, whatever. We set ourselves in agreement, Father. We thank you, Lord, that yes, your word Lord. is rising up just like it's the right armor of God. Armor, thank you that your word is guarding it uh, like the helmet of salvation, guarding, helping them guard their thoughts, helping them to have a strategic focus focus as they are thanking you for what you've already done. Lord, we thank you that we receive miracles and signs and wonders all to your glory in yes, Jesus' Lord. name. In Jesus' name. And I always say this, we want to give you an opportunity. If you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, heaven wouldn't be the same without you. Amen. We want you there. You Do you know that in God's mind, every man, woman, and child who's ever been born is a member of his family? Amen. But we need to receive the gift of Christ in order order to become a part of that family because whenever Adam sinned man mankind was separated from God but God came and made a bridge and his name is Jesus so the word of God says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever of us would we believe, believe on, him. on him and and receive him would have everlasting life everlasting life so let me pray with you. Father God, say this prayer with me if you want to receive Jesus. Thank Father you, God, Father. I'm so glad that you Thank gave you. Jesus for me. I'm so glad that I was on your mind when Jesus came to the earth, when Jesus hung on the cross in my place and took, took the, the curse of sin upon him so I wouldn't have to. Yes, so, Lord. Lord, I thank you for Jesus coming into my heart now. I'm so glad that I'm a part of your family, mm -hmm. Father. I thank you that you've cleansed me and forgiven me of all my sins through Christ Jesus. Lord, help me to grow in you so that I can my life can bring you glory all the days of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you for being a part of our service today. Yes. We love you, but you know what? God loves you even more. Yes. And we're just continuing to thank Him for miracles being accomplished in your life and in the lives of those that will listen and uh, be a part of these services. Amen. Amen. We'll catch you next week. Y'all have a blessed week. Let us hear.